Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back of his Teardown Lab. We're going to be revisiting the Nintendo Game & Watch Rain Shower. If you recall, I sort of demonstrated this, but we had a little play with its gameplay, but you notice the right-hand screen is a bit sort of cack looking. And I was trying to figure out what's going on here, and we'll, we'll leave it in this sort of test mode so you can see all the pixels. And then it dawned on me, what if something was wrong with the polarizing filter? So just to show you, if you look at the left screen, you can see how the screen can go dark or light depending on how I twist this. And on the right hand side, you can actually, if you're wearing the glasses, you can orient this in a way that it looks just the same as the left hand screen. So it made me wonder that maybe there's something wrong with the polarizing filter here. And how I was going to solve that is that I've got this, and this is a panel of an old tablet. I'm going to zoom out so you can see it see all the mess around the table, don't get distracted by that. This is what we're going to focus on. And uh, this should have a polarizing filter in it. And the chances are I'm never going to use this panel again. So it's kind of almost a teardown of a tablet panel. Look how huge that thing is. And I'm actually putting pieces in the bin as I go along. We know it. we're not going to sort of revisit this. So it's almost a teardown lab of a panel and a repair video of a sort of gaming watch. Now, yes, 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 we're already there. Now, you can see this thing. I'm just gonna pop this off. You see that PCB uh, ribbon cable here? That's because this is the actual backlight. And you can see it's made up of loads of different lenses. And if you haven't seen them, I'll just pop them out. They're sort of like these sort of frainal lenses. There we go. And it's designed because on the end here, there's actually some LEDs. And all of these lenses are designed to sort of evenly distribute the light so it shines evenly throughout the back of the panel. So that's kind of interesting. Let's see if we can find the LEDs while we're here. I thought they were here, but I don't think they are. They might be on this edge. It's quite thick, isn't it? See, these things are very thick. There we go, more layers. And there's the LED strip. And you can see there's even another layer at the back to do some sort of reflection. It's all to do with sort of internal reflective indexes and all of that thing. But this is really thick, this back piece. Just think the screen's all of that, but then at the back you've got an extra sort of millimeter of this thing. And here's your strip with all the LEDs on. So you can see there's a whole bunch of LEDs. Interesting, but not useful. So we're going to throw it all away, unless you can think of a use for some shiny, shiny mylar. This is quite nice, actually. I wonder if I might... Oh, these are lenses. Remember, they were... Yeah, can we get any interesting effects going on with that? Not really. But that's quite cool, this one. Do some Doctor Who stuff. Right, in the bin it goes. Ready for recycling. So this is the panel. It's got, uh, I think the touch screen was already liberated from this. So hopefully though, there's some sort of polarizing filter and it might just be one of those. Sometimes they all just come off in different layers. This one though, I don't know if I'm gonna be so lucky. Where's those sunglasses? Here we are. It's gonna look at this through the sunglasses and it just, I can, I'm rotating, as you rotate it, with sunglasses on, you'll see it gets it goes dark and light. You don't really get the effect so well on this, but you just about see that. So there's definitely one on there. Let's see if we can use our scalpel blade to fish something. It might be a really thin, kind of dangerous, must be careful. There it is. Now, I don't know if you can quite see that. I've got the blade under a film that's on the Screen. Now, whether or not I can get this off in one piece, it's debatable, but I don't really need it all to come off. I only need a small square, so I don't really need it all to come off in a, a one decent piece. I just hope that in its extraction, it doesn't lose its polarizing goodness. I think what I'll do is I've got pliers here. I'm just going to, I'll zoom out to show you. I'm going to pliers it and just try to take it off in one quick motion. We know we're going to damage the corner, but let's. Whoa. Remember, this is glass. You can see the glass shattering there. There's a glass screen. We need one of our back office cards just to keep that held down while we work it. All right, before we go too far, I can 
can see I've got a certain amount of that screen off. I'm just going to wear my glasses again and have a look. Yes, that's definitely the filter and it still works. So let's try to get a nice piece off. You can see there's sort of glue adhesive marks on it. We don't really want them on our game and watch screen. It's better than nothing. Certainly, at least we can play the game, but if we can minimize that, it would be good. So I'm just pulling straight up. Let's be really careful when you're doing this. Remember that's glass you're pulling against. At any point it could shatter. If you've got safety glasses, definitely wear them. And if you haven't got safety glasses, go get a pair. So you can buy this filter material and it will come without adhesive on. Here's a little novelty for you. If you run this back in your tablet without this screen on, this filter, the screen wouldn't actually show anything. But if you're wearing sunglasses, you'd be able to read what's on your monitor, so you could use that as a sort of privacy shield. So there you go, that's your um, HD panel ready for the bin. It's glass though, guys, remember, be careful how you get rid of it. <laughs> so the moment of truth. Now you can see what I was trying to get at. Look at that. So you can see now how, how sort of faint that is and how the clear this one is. So if we're trying to sort of aim for an equal, actually, to be honest, they both seem to benefit. They look pretty good. I'm trying to think, does the left one actually look better or not with this? Hmm. So what I'm going to do is cut out a piece to put here. Now, to just before I go further, just to let you know, this is adhesive. Now, do I want to stick this down on the old original screen? I've got to be careful about that because I don't really want to ruin the screen in this. So let's, let's sort of get in there and then we'll worry about it. But just to sort of mark it off. That way is good. That way is good. So really, any sort of orientation, you can see it's through 90 degrees. In fact, see the left screen is kicking in at a different rate. So, I wonder what's happened. Maybe the uh, maybe the old lens in this is sort of denatured over time. So we're going to use our very sharp scalpel blade to find this, the sort of. There's a tab in there, the locking tab. We just prise that one up. Gonna try to get to the next one as well. Here we go. See, the two tabs have popped up. Oh, the game is running. Gonna drive us nuts. So we set it right. I'm gonna pause the camera because there's a lot of screws here. We'll jump cut back. We're back. Screws undone. I've just flipped the screen over so you can see it here. It's interesting. There's a sort of slight crack here had a bit of damage at some point in the past. So while we're here, we're gonna fish out that. So this is the actual original screen and filter with a bit of glass shards there. So we'll just get rid of those off this, off camera into the bin. And this must be, let's see. Let's see which we can, which of these lenses here or pieces of paper or the polarizing filter. So this is our new one. So it appears a sort of polarization is in the actual screen itself. It doesn't look like it's in these um, these bits here at all. They don't seem to care. So I'm wondering if this inner layer here was the original sort of polarizing filter. certainly appears to have sort of oh yeah it is, it is a polarizing filter but you can see it's very weak strangely weak so 
what we're going to do is we're just going to put this on top as a template, stick it on, and then just cut around it. I think that's going to work out for us. It actually it has, if you just see there on my hand, it's it's actually got kind of a my camera will focus, a sort of burn-in mark there. So maybe uh, maybe it's just sort of exposed to the natural elements, sunlight and things, has sort of denatured it. But let's uh, we forgive it, we forgive it all these issues. It's many years old now. At least 1983 this would have been made. So I'm just sticking this on. And remember the orientation? We had to rotate the screens through 90 degrees and all of that. Just a bit like an old screen protector on a phone. You want to make sure all the bubbles are out. You don't want any of those interfering with your gameplay. I'm sure we're not going to... We'll forgive it a lot more than we'd forgive a mobile phone, but it's nice to get rid of it if we can. So just going to use the... back of my uh, tweezers a little bit just to push out some of these air bubbles. Yeah. I probably ought to make sure that was dust free before doing that but I didn't but let's just battle on. We've got plenty of filter paper here we could do this many times over so just taking my scissors I'm just going to cut around that. It's actually shaped. You can see these got some two curved edges and two angular sharp edges here. I suspect that's to make sure the filters got installed in the right way. I'm just going to cut those nicely. Snip them off. Snip, snip, snip. I'm going to do a little test here. Mmm, nice. It's a shame about the uh, little air bubbles, but uh, we can always do this again a bit later on. I'm just going to get something to clean this with though. I've got a bit of foam clean spray. Which I find quite irritant, so I do wash my hands often after using foam clean spray. It's very, it's, got, it's great as a cleaner, but also highly irritant. Let's use our trusty back office business card because it's a bit softer. Rub out those final fingerprints. Let's buff it as nicely as we can. Yes, that's a nice shine. Let's see if we can get the other side. And then we just have to figure out which way around it goes. Green. Very tricky. <laughs> it looks there's. I thought that the actual other sort of screen in there would have the same sort of corners, but it doesn't. Does it matter? That is the question. Theoretically, for a polarizing filter, it doesn't, as long as it's more or less the right way around. So, I think that will be fine in there. Just ever so slightly wide. I'm just going to trim the edge again. Just trim the other side. Does it plop straight in nicely? Yes it does. Brilliant. So get the PCB. pop it all back, put the screws back in. See you back here in a moment. That's the last of the screws tightened. The moment of truth now where I flip the screen over and hopefully... Oh no! Uh oh! Spaghettios! Did I put it in wrong? <laughs> ah! You can put it in wrong! It's not just 90 degrees dependent. Let's try again. I've decided that we're just going to only use our new screen because it was interfering with the old screen. So we're going to try to bin the old screen. But because we had adhesive on the screen that's come out of the monitor, I'm just soaking it in a little bit of alcohol. This is just neat isopropyl alcohol. I'm just going to put my finger in this just to sort of agitate it to get that adhesive to float off there. And you can see I've made a little nick 
that little nick in the screen is to tell me to put it, that's the right hand side basically of the screen when I assemble it. And the reason I want the adhesive removed is because I don't really want it to stick to the glass screen in the actual unit, so I don't want it to stick to that one at all. Just because it gives us the opportunity to do something in the future if we get an original replacement uh, lens or something like that. So that is now pretty well washed and it should be quite clean. So I'm just going to take it out very gingerly by the corner and let it sort of drip dry. I don't want to leave it in there too long in case the actual polarizing coating gets sort of caught. So I'm just going to sort of let it drip up. There we go. Let it drip. So I've cleaned the material as best as I can. Some of the sort of adhesive has sort of kind of stayed on there. It's very hard to get that shiny. I've tried a lot of different uh, chemicals to get it off and nothing really worked. But it's not sticky, it's just not, you know, smooth. But we're just going to roll ahead. I think it's going to work out fine. So I'm just going to put this screen in. You can see there I was holding it very gingerly with the tweezers to stop the actual glass of that unit flopping over. We don't want to damage that. I'm just going to pop these screws in. and. Uh, I'm going to throw caution to the wind now and just put all of the screws in first before actually checking if it's the right way around. We've done everything we can. We've checked it, we've marked it, we've notched it, everything. What I'm going to do as well, while I've, um, I'm going to use this electric screwdriver. That's the first main improvement because it's far too painful doing all these screws by hand. But really, I don't know if it's going to save much time because I still need the tweezers to kind of position them. And then being. Ah, you know what? I'm just gonna do it by hand. Being a flathead, <laughs> flatheads really aren't as good on electric screwdrivers because you know they're so hard to centralise and engaged. I'm really hoping this has worked out now. I'm, I'm kind of confident. I'm gonna leave the old sort of filter in the case here somewhere as well, so that we can sort of retrieve it. Perhaps someone in the future might attempt a better repair and uh, it'll give them a bit of an idea what we've done here. And then they might go, why haven't they used that and then spend loads of time fitting this and being very disappointed. At least they'll get to see my thumbprints and fingerprints on it. They might use some sort of futuristic fingerprint ID to trace it back to me and then they'll contact me on Skype and ask me what I did. Almost there. Another three screws, mere three screws. They certainly don't make things like this anymore, you know, so well made. Look how much fittings they had. Didn't count the screws here, but I seem to have put them in and out an awful lot of times now. They seem to be looking at the tip of them as well. They're actually a, a kind of a hex head screw. Right, so let's leave this membrane in here in case in fact I'm just going to see if there's a better way not really if it's going to go in it's going to go in this way and it might get bit a little bit but let's see whoa I think we've done it and that screen looks pretty damn clear even up close no dust behind it so I think we can clip this back down <laughs> gamey not hearing anything. Oh, there I am. Yeah, I can't quite remember what we can what we do here. Let's reset this. Assuming one of these is that all clear. So it certainly looks like all of the characters on the screens are working, and that's really important. Yeah, looking at my phone, I thought something wasn't quite right. I've put in the uh, screen wrong. This building is supposed to be on this side. So I'm going to have to dismantle this yet again. Oh, well. Well, that's how you fix it anyway. At least the <laughs> polarizing filter's fine. So if you've got a Game & Watch and that's a problem with a dim screen, yeah, it could be a knackered polarizing filter. So salvage some of this material or buy it off the internet and you'll be able to repair that. Please feel free to comment down below. I'd love you to like my video and click subscribe and as ever, thank you for watching. Finally, that was a lot of bloody screws.